Welcome to Little Steps Big Gains in episode three of our series on the treatment of upper limb ataxia, ocular motor coordination. Now that we talked about the importance of core trunk stabilization, postural correction, when it comes to upper lower limb ataxia, balance and walking, we're gonna transition to talking about the eyes, ocular motor, around the eyes, coordination, the coordination of the eye muscles that play a huge role in executing all of our movements. The cerebellum is considered the network hub for optimizing our eye movements. A few important eye movements include cicades. That's the ability of the eyes to coordinate and jump back and forth between targets. We'll talk about why that is so important for coordination. Smooth pursuits or tracking the ability of the eyes to Co coordinate themselves to track moving objects. Convergence, working together to come together for depth perception. Dynamic visual acuity, that's our vestibular ocular reflex. It's our ability to keep our gaze stabilized while our head is turning. Or suppressing that, the ability of the eyes to track with the head in a moving target. Those are a few optimal eye movements that are necessary for upper and lower limb function. Here is a list of the anatomical subdivisions of the cerebellum and the specific eye movements that these subdivisions are responsible for. Now, what is the connection between ocular motor impairments and upper limb ataxia? Well, an intact cerebellum is a prerequisite for optimal ocular motor performance because the cerebellum fine tunes subtypes of movements to bring the target into the phobia. It fixates the target so that the brain has time to analyze and interpret the visual scene. When it comes to manual aiming, manual aiming for a target, that can be broken down into two phases. So the first thing that happens is the eyes kick in to fixate on the target so you know where you're going, right? Then we have this, this central set of motor commands of the limb that reaches, but it cuts us short. It stops there because for that final phase, that is where the eyes kick in to help that limb make that last movement precise. That's the visually directed phase. So this whole manual moving, those two phases include a combination of proprioception and eye movements together. If we have error in our eye movements, that's going to result in error of the limb movements. So they work together. Now, in order to address these ocular motor impairments, there's two routes we can go. We can include remediation exercises, helping to strengthen the ocular motor control. And then we can jump into compensatory strategies, ways to kind of techniques to offset the problem. Specific ocular motor exercises include practicing cicades, jumping back and forth, smooth pursuits, tracking, convergence, coming together. Come back for our next episode. I'm going to give you some exercises for fine hand skills, fine motor that include ocular motor training. But here, let's go ahead and look at gaze stabilization. That's the ability to fixate the eyes on a target while turning the head side to side also called the vestibulo ocular reflex. You can find a specific video demonstrating the vestibulo ocular reflex in the description below. But here's a few studies that can show the benefits of including gaze stabilization with our exercise program. Gaze stability exercises added the effects of proprioceptive training in improving gait and functional independence in cerebellar ataxic patients. This study had two groups. Group A did gaze stability exercises with the proprioceptive training, and Group B only did proprioceptive training. The results showed that gaze stability exercises along with proprioceptive training was more effective in improving balance than proprioceptive training alone in patients with cerebellar ataxia. The proprioceptive exercises that both groups did included weight bearing on a soft mat, ankle disc, balance board, or air cushion. They did a one-legged stance, barefoot, eyes open. They did four sets, 20 seconds on, 40 seconds off. Group A did those exercises, but added gaze stabilization. So they did two targets, one which was 200 centimeters, 6.5 feet away, and a second one that was 40 centimeters, 1.3 feet away. 
They practice fixating their eyes on the target while turning their head side to side. They did this two minutes, five times a day. Second is a case study. Gaze stabilization exercises to decrease fall rate in person with hereditary cerebellar atrophy, a case study. This patient, her goal was to continue to live at home independently, but she was having multiple falls a day. She did gaze stabilization exercises three times a day for seven weeks. The result of adding these exercises, she had a 78.6% reduction in weekly self-reported falls at one week. 89.3% reduction in self-reported falls at discharge, the average of four to seven weeks. The clinical significance gaze stabilization designed to adapt the VOR produced meaningful functional results in a patient with hereditary cerebellar atrophy. So in conclusion, ocular motor coordination, the coordination of the eyes plays a huge role in our functional independence, balance, upper, lower limb ataxia. Here's a few exercises you can do. Stay tuned for our next episode. I'm going to include some eye movement training with fine motor coordination tasks. It's going to be really helpful. Now, if you found this video educational, please press that like, subscribe, share with others. My link to Patreon is in the description below. And then check out other free educational videos and free home exercise programs for balance, coordination, falls. And you can find those links in the description below because little steps together, we can make some big gains.